When you have a car which is successful, sells well, is popular with customers and with journalists alike, finding an update or creating an update can be a bit of a problem. And this was the problem faced by GTM cars. Peter Beck and Paddy Fitch of, Pete, of GTM Cars had successfully updated the Cox GTM that, under their stewardship to include a chin spoiler at the front, 13-inch wheels instead of the 10-inch originals, and also they'd beefed up the separate chassis and uh, increased the strength, and as a, a happy side effect, that had brought the balance closer to the ideal 50-50 weight distribution. However, there is only so far you can go with a 1967 design. The partners turned to the leading designer in the kit car industry in the UK at the time, Richard Oakes, who'd already got quite a, a, a reputation for creating classic kit car designs, starting with his own Nova, which went into America as the Sterling and Australia as the Eureka. He then went on to design the Midas Bronze and Midas Gold for Midas Cars. Again, both regarded as classic British kit cars and both of those were GRP monocoques, something that the new GTM was also to gain. The silhouette was definitely familiar GTM, but it was modernised. It definitely looked very different to the original car while still keeping a family face. The GRP monocoque retained mini subframes front and rear as had the previous Cox GTM. But now there was a removable roof. This gave them the claim that the GTM Rossa, as the new car was to be known, was the first mid-engined GRP monocoque car in the world that was also a convertible. This original Rossa was very popular and sales quickly outshone the classic GTM Coupe. When they later came out with the Mark II that you can see in the pictures, which included furred in headlamps instead of the original upright headlamps, exposed headlamps of the original GTM Rossa, the, the family look that was to evolve into future Rossas was established. And by now, Rossa sales had outstripped the coupe by such a degree that the company sold the GTM coupe project on to a new owner. With the focus now on the Rossa, work began on the updated Rossa to include the K-series engine used by Rover in the Metro. This meant an increase in track, and also slight increase in length. The nose was rounded off and the furred in headlamps were modified again, but it retained that same GTM Rossa look. It also retained the removable hardtop. I was lucky enough to get to drive a GTM Rossa when I was producing kits and cruising for the Men and Motors channel on TV. And it impressed me greatly. It had a very stiff body with the roof attached. I didn't drive it with the roof off, so I can't really comment on that. The doors were large and easy access for a tall person like myself. The gear change, which was based on a mini rod mechanism, was a little bit notchy and probably the only thing that really let the car down. But the extra performance from the 1.4 K-series engine in the light GRP monocoque made for very sprightly performance. 
the press liked the car too and it was very well received. Sales backed that up with many, many happy K3 Rossa, as it was to be known, uh, customers. And if you go to K-car shows even today, the majority of GTMs that you will see will be the K3 Rossa or the later Libra, which is another story again. So this is a successful story of replacing a classic kit car with something that became a classic in its own right. Hope you've enjoyed this video and please hit that thumbs up to let people know that it's a video that you enjoyed. More importantly, hit that bell, spread the word and leave a comment in the leave a comment in the comments below and tell us have you had a gtm have you driven a gtm and what were your thoughts billy says please like and subscribe thank you